Good morning, Dr. Gilbert. Good morning. Would you please state your name for the record? Richard Stephen Gilbert. And what is your occupation? I am an orthopedic surgeon, and I have a subspecialty training in surgery of the hand and upper extremity. Dr. Gilbert, where do you work currently? I currently work in New York and Long Island at Northwell Health. And you mentioned you have a specialty. Can you tell us a little bit more about what your specialty is? So after medical school, I trained in orthopedic surgery, and I did an orthopedic surgery residency. And for a year thereafter, I did a hand and upper extremity sur surgery resident fellowship. And so my, my practice for the past 22 years has been limited to surgery of the hand, wrist, and elbow. And I think you may have gotten ahead of me there, but how, how long have you been practicing? 22 years. Okay. What percentage of your practice over the past 22 years has involved surgery? Approximately one-third of my practice. Okay. And other than that one-third that involves surgery, what does the rest of your practice entail? The rest of my practice entails uh, some academic work, but mostly uh, seeing patients in the office, seeing them either pre- or post-operatively. A large portion of hand surgeons uh, treat patients non-operatively. In terms of the surgeries that you do, can you describe for us um, the, the types of surgeries that you will perform? So again, I, I limit my practice to hand, wrist, and elbow. I would say approximately 75% or so of my practice is limited to the, to the hand itself. And this really varies from anything from conditions like carpal tunnel syndrome to tendonitis to injuries such as amputations, fractures, sharp lacerations, et cetera. Over the course of your 22 years of practice, how many surgeries would you estimate you've performed? I, I perform about three to 400 surgeries a year, so a rough estimate would be approximately uh, 10,000, maybe a little less. Where are you currently licensed? In New York. And how long have you been licensed in New York? I have been licensed in New York since 1994, so that would be uh, 28 years. And do you have any certifications? Yes. And can you tell us about those? Uh, I am board certified by the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery, and I have a certificate of added qualifications in surgery of the hand from the American Society for Surgery of the Hand. When did you receive your board certification? 2002. And can you describe for us what current positions you hold? I am currently a, a, an assistant professor of orthopedic surgery at Northwell Health, and I'm also the president-elect of the New York Society for Surgery of the Hand. In what professional organizations are you a member? I'm a member of uh, multiple orthopedic uh, organizations, including the Orth American Board of Orthopedic Surgery, the American Association of Orthopedic Surgery and the American Society for Surgery of the Hand, as well as the New York Society for Surgery of the Hand. Have you published any articles in your field? Yes, I have. Have you testified as an expert before? Yes, I have. Can you ballpark for us how many times? Uh, certainly less than 10 over the past 22 years. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to offer Dr. Gilbert as an expert in the field of orthopedic surgery, uh, specializing in the hand. All right, any objection? No objection, Your Honor. So moved. So Dr. Gilbert, what work were you asked to do in connection with this case? So I was asked to review uh, medical records, radiographs, pictures, as well as testimonies and depositions related to Mr. Depp's finger injury. Okay. And to your understanding, what is Mr. Depp's explanation of how his finger was injured? He describes that he was in Australia and his right hand was over the side of a bar uh, when a vodka bottle was thrown at his hand, injuring his right middle finger and he describes that the vodka bottle exploded. 
Are you aware of other explanations for that injury? Uh, there have been multiple other explanations, uh, but I think the the one that was was brought out was by Ms. Hurd, who uh, believed that he, Mr. Depp was holding a landline and of anger was uh, punching it against the wall, and this resulted in his right middle finger injury. Okay. Based on your review of the medical records um, and other documents in connection with Mr. Depp's finger injury, how would you describe the nature of the injury to Mr. Depp's finger? Well, the nature of the injury was uh, he had what we describe as a comminuted fracture of the distal phalanx, meaning there was a fracture of the tip of the finger, and comminuted meaning that there were multiple pieces. So this is some type of blunt force with a high mechanism of injury. He also sustained loss of the tissue along what's called the ul ulnar side of the finger towards the little finger. Uh, and this uh, appeared, based upon my review of the pictures, to be some type of sharp laceration because it, it represented a clean edges of the wound. Can we take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 60? And pull up to go, go to page 3. And, and Dr. Gilbert, are you familiar with this document? Yes. And, and what is it? So these are two radiographs, x-rays, of Mr. Depp's fingers finger, his middle finger. Okay. Um, sorry, just to stop you, but uh, Your Honor, may we publish this to the jury as a demonstrative? A any objection? No objection. All right, we'll identify it as 60 page 3 and publish to the jury. And Dr. Gilbert, sorry, sorry to cut you off oh, there. Okay. Can, can, you, can you just tell, tell the jury um, what we're looking at here in, so in this x-ray? Two x-rays of uh, Mr. Depp's right middle finger after the injury, and towards the tip of the finger, there's a fracture, uh, again, what I described as a comminuted fracture, meaning there are multiple pieces at the tip. There's also a transverse component to the fracture closer to the joint. In your view, what types of mechanisms can cause this sort of injury? So this is a a mechanism of injury that has high velocity or force, generally a crush type injury. A simple fall would not result in a comminute fracture such as is seen in these x-rays. And we, we're using the term comminuted fracture. Can we just define that quickly for us? So again, comminuted, and it's not particular to a finger, can, is, is a medical term for a fracture that has multiple fragments. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, could this injury have been sustained in the manner Mr. Depp described? I do believe so. And how might that work? How, how might a thrown vodka bottle produce an injury like this? So a vodka bottle, which is a hard object, uh, would have crushed the tip of the finger, resulting in the comminuted fracture. And in addition, as the vodka bottle broke, the uh, glass would have lacerated the finger, resulting in the soft tissue loss that was also seen with this injury. What's your assessment of the description of the cause of the injury offered by Ms. Hurd? <clears throat> I think that's highly unlikely. And why is that? Uh, because one, uh, in general, when a, an injury is caused by punching against a wall or a hard, hard object, it is extremely rare to see an injury to the tips of the fingers, which is seen with Mr. Depp's injury. Generally, you're holding something with a fist, and that in general leads to injuries most commonly of the knuckles here, um, or fractures of the metacarpals. We call these boxer fractures. Second most common after those would be injuries to these, but as you can see, if you're holding something and make, hitting against something, it is very unlikely that the tips of the fingers will be injured. In addition, just uh, taking into account the radiographs and the pictures of the injury, um, I would not believe that a, a blunt force, solely a blunt force against a, a wall would result in a soft tissue loss. 
What other injuries, if any, would you expect to see uh, on Mr. Depp's hand uh, if the injury had occurred as, as Ms. Heard described? So if you would have, if that were the cause of the injury, you would certainly, that would be a dorsally directed, so this is a dorsal in the back of the hand as opposed to the palmer side. So if you're punching against something, you would certainly expect an injury to the nail bed, and those are always seen in those type of injuries. If there is an injury to the tip of the finger, which again I said is rare, so you would see either a loss of the nail or blood underneath the nail called a subungual hematoma. In your review of the medical records, did you see any sign of anything like that? None whatsoever.